Hi everybody, and this is Connie, and welcome back to my paranormal book obsession. And I know it's been a minute since I did a video last, so I will link the playlist down below if you're interested in watching about um, these books. I will, first of all, I'm going to talk about Patricia Briggs as the author. And I'm going to reread this. I read this the first time. I'm going to reread it, and we will go from there. Patricia Briggs, the number one New York best-selling author of the Mercy Thompson series, lives in Washington State with her husband, children, and a small herd of horses. She has written 17 novels to date, published by Ace Books in 1993, and shifted gears in 2006 to write urban fantasy. In fall of 2010, Patricia made another foray into traditional fantasy, and then Ace published a revised version of her very first book, Masks, in 2010, and its never-before-published sequel, Wolfsbane, in 2010 also, both of which debuted on the New York Times bestseller list for the mass market fiction. In 2006, Ace Books published Moon Called, the first book in her number one New York Times bestselling and signature series about Mercy Thompson. The nonstop adventure left readers wanting more, and <clears throat> excuse me, in word of this exciting new urban fantasy series about a shape shifting mechanic spread quickly. Blood Brown, Blood Bound, 2007, the second book in the series, debuted debuted at number 12 on the New York Times bestseller list. After this incredible success of Iron Kiss 2008, which landed at number one on the New York Times list, the Mercy Thompson saga continued to win hearts of readers and grow in popularity with the release of each book, Bone Crossed 2009. The fourth book in the series and first to be published in hardcover debuted at number three on the New York Times hardcover bestseller list, where it stayed for four weeks. The most recent hardcover, Silverborn, 2010, debuted at number one on the New York Times hardcover bestseller list and stayed on the printed list for a total of three weeks. Briggs also writes the Alpha and Omega series, which are set in the same world as the Mercy Thompson novels. What began as a novel, novella, Alpha and Omega, oh, sorry, what began as the novella Alpha and Omega in an anthology called On the Prowl in 2007 was the expanded into a has now expanded into a full new series. The subsequent books were Cry Wolf 2008 and Hunting Ground in 2009. Both New York Times bestseller, the third book of the Alpha and Omega series is Fair Game 2012 and debuted <coughs> excuse me at number four on the New York Times bestseller list. For more information about Patricia Briggs and her marvelous novels, feel free to visit the author on the web at www.patriciabriggs.com. So, as you know, we are talking about the Mercy Thompson series, and we are on to book five and six. And book five is Silverborn. I knew Silverborn was going to be Samuel's book before I finished Bone Crossed. Samuel has just has been just kind of existing for too long, and it's time to do something about it. Authors love unstable situations. It's like seeing a giant boulder balanced atop a steep hill. One little nudge and things get interesting fast. Of course, Mercy has her own problems. The Fay book, well, I'd like to claim I plan everything. I was finished finishing hunting ground when Daniel does <coughs> excuse me when Daniel dos Santos wrote to me asking for more details about Silverborn because he didn't want to give it a generic cover Mercy still had the book of fey knowledge she'd borrowed back in iron kissed and needed to return it to the proprietor of that little bookstore it had been one of those little details that I'd forgotten to include in Iron Kissed. I noticed the omission before Iron Kissed made it to print, but one of the benefits of a series is that I decided just to make a little scene in Bone Crossed instead of trying to work it into an already finished book. A trip to the bookstore just never felt right in Bone Crossed. I mentioned a. I mentioned it, a trip. Okay. 
I mentioned it to let readers know that I hadn't forgotten about it in case they were getting antsy. It was one of those details I wrote a note for myself about so I wouldn't forget. After all, Mercy is supposed to be a likable heroine, and we all know how book lovers feel about people who don't return borrowed books. So the book was this little nagging thread that just needed to be tied up with a sentence or two. No big deal. Brewster's Library, the bookstore where Mercy borrowed the book, is one of the few things in Mercy's world that actually that's actually based on a real place, with permission by its owner, of course. However, while I was writing Bone Cross, the store closed. That was all right, not that the bookstore had closed, but I don't like to see bookstores book closing, but for the Mercy series, it didn't really matter. I usually make up important locations, mostly so that for instance, churches don't have people ask them if they are haunted or have vampires in the basement. Then I thought, what if Mercy tries to return the book and finds no one at the bookstore? So I told Daniel about the book, and he was happy. Mercy wasn't as happy with me, but happy people don't make for good stories. That is number five, Silverborn. So we are on to Rivermarked. Rivermarked was a book that I'd been... And by the way, this is Patty writing these sentences. It's from her point of view, okay? Rivermarked was a book that I'd been planning for a long time. Not the adventure part. That happened when my husband suggested that any body water as large as the, as the Columbia must have stories of giant monsters who lie beneath the surface. He was right. But all the rest... I had known almost from the beginning of the series that I would need to work in more walkers and the Native American culture in our area. However, I puzzled about how to do it justice until, in the immortal words of Dr. Seuss, my puzzler was sore. I don't mind offending people, but only when I mean to offend people. Growing up in Montana and especially working at the Museum of the Rockies left me very aware of the explore, exploration, exportation, <laughs> Growing up in Montana and especially working at the Museum of the Rockies left me very aware of the exploitation of the Native American peoples and their culture. My mother was a children's librarian. I remember that traditional stories were revised for modern audiences until they bore only a nodding acquaintance with the originals but they were released as authentic Indian stories when they were, in fact, nothing of the kind. So I worried and fretted. I decided to do exactly what I've done with the Russian, UK, German, and Norwegian, and among others, among others, myths, traditions, and histories. I mined the treasure trove of stories, treated them with due respect, but used them in ways that were never meant to be used. I am not attempting to preserve culture or record actual events or stories. Instead, I bow my head in gratitude to those storytellers who have gone before and paved a way for, for, for me play in their stomping ground. Doubtless of who want to be offended will, allowing to make them happy too, which pleases me as much as it pleases them. Hopefully, though, most people will enjoy their glimpse into the native legends of the Columbia George as much as I enjoyed writing I will them. talk to you next time in my paranormal romance obsession. Bye-bye.